Hello everyone, and welcome to my ratchet tutorial. In a nutshell, what a ratchet is, is a mechanism where the input from a shaft gets taken and turned into a different output, depending on the direction it's turning. For example, if you turn it in one direction, it will engage, and when you turn it in the other direction, it doesn't. In that situation, you can use it to share power between motors, like you've seen on many of my robots, and I will give examples later in the video. To make a ratchet, you will need two 4x4 beams, one thin rubber band, two medium shafts, two 48 tooth gears, some one length standoffs, four normal pins, and one three length pin. You'll also need a ratchet gear as well as a ratchet tooth, but there are alternatives that can be used that I'll talk about later. First thing you want to do is take one of your cap shafts, it also works with a normal shaft, and stick it through the ratchet gear. This can also be done with a sprocket, you'll see later. Then you want to stick it through the center of the 4x4 plate. Once that's done, you want to put standoffs, not around every corner, but through three of the corners. Make sure that at least one of the corners is non-occupied. Then put the three length pin through that non-occupied corner. You want to take your ratchet tooth and hook a rubber band around it so that it's pulling down in the direction where the tooth is angled. Once that's done, you will put the ratchet tooth through the three length pin and so the rubber band is pulling it down onto the ratchet gear. Then you put a one length standoff just underneath the pin that is holding the ratchet tooth and hook it around three of the, of the one length standoffs. If this works, you should be able to turn the gear and it should click. Then put the next 4x4 plate on. Then use your four pins and form like a plus sign around the hole where the shaft goes through. Once that's done, you want to put a cap shaft through a 48 tooth gear as you're about to see. Once your cap shaft is through the 48 tooth gear, go ahead and attach that to the ratchet mechanism. Then put the other 48 tooth gear on the other end of the shaft. Do a few tests by spinning one of the 48 tooth gears and testing the resistance on one way versus the other. If it only spins in one direction while providing resistance, then you know it works. There are also multiple types of ratchets that can be used, and each can be made with different parts, such as this one, which only uses Gen 1 parts. This one, that uses a different type of rubber band in order to make sure that it has a harder click and works better for more strong mechanisms. And this one, which uses a standoff extender combined with the ratchet gear in order to have a quieter click as well as to poke out less far. This can be used for mechanisms that are much more compact and don't actually have the room for the poking out part of the other ratchet teeth. In order to incorporate a ratchet, what you first want to do is have a separate gear attached directly to the motor that is meshing with the gear attached to the ratchet. On either side it works. If you did this correctly, when you spin the motor in one way, the ratchet should not turn, and when you spin the motor in the other way, the ratchet should. Using this method, you can power one mechanism only when the motor is turning in one way, and the other mechanism only when it's turning in another way. If you're testing this right away after you're done building your ratchet, make sure to remember that some resistance has to be provided against the ratchet in order for it to actually not engage when it's spinning in the opposite direction. Usually when you add a mechanism or something like that, it will activate, but it should spin in both directions if nothing's attached to it. Once something is attached to it, it should spin in only one direction. If you want to make a double ratchet, make sure to gear another ratchet to the main shaft attached to the motor. In that situation, that means that when you spin in one direction, only one ratchet will engage, while in the other, the other ratchet will engage. Shoutout to Elijah from 2420B. With just a few pointers in the right direction from my videos, he was able to make an effective ratchet motor share without a tutorial. I'm looking forward to seeing what he achieves this season. I understand that this was my first VEX tutorial ever, so if you have any extra questions, make sure to ask them in the comments, and I'll try to follow up with a Q&A video.